You guys are next. Uh, so next up is Cloud HQ. So I'm noticing you can read like two thirds of the tweets up there. The rest are uh, a little faded. You change your shoes. <laughs> Stand over here in the light. Okay, I'm gonna pass it off. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready, great. I'll just start talking now before your five minutes hop on. Hey, I'm Naomi, I'm CMO of CutHQ. I'm here with Sanad Dizdar. He's the founder of CutHQ. And CutHQ is, is here to help companies have a richer experience while using the cloud. What we see now with companies is that all the data that they're using is really segregated in different apps. So most startups use Google Apps because as an infrastructure, it's free, right? It's intuitive and it's collaborative which is awesome. But then what happens when you, know, you have people who you hire who are mobile and they don't want to use Google Apps because when you use Google Apps on mobile, it's, it's harder to use it. Maybe they'll prefer to use Evernote. Somebody here said that they were a salesperson. Well, as a salesperson, you're on the road a lot and you're probably using mobile quite a bit. You're probably going to be using Evernote or OneNote, uh, Microsoft's new competitor to Evernote. But then the question is, now that your data is out in the cloud, what's going to happen if you're taking minute notes, you know, you've met with a client, um, and you want to you make sure that your team sees the note, you want to share it with your team? Well, that data in the cloud is lost, because Evernote doesn't allow you to share your notes with other people unless they're also an Evernote user. So you have kind of this sporadic information that's kind of not, it's not captured properly, and it's at risk for being lost. Um, you need to back up all your data, and collaboration suffers in companies. So what CloudHQ does is we sync between different apps. So project managers probably prefer to use Basecamp, for example. And uh, people who are mobile, like salespeople, or uh, often upper management, they're always out meeting partners or clients, they're gonna wanna use Evernote. And what happens with people who are using Microsoft Office, you know, like SharePoint, back, um, back at the office, you all need to sync your data together because otherwise your data is just not on the same page. That's what CloudHQ does. We actually sync it all together. So if you're going to go ahead and enter in a note on Evernote, um, but I'm in project management and I'm in Basecamp, I'll receive that note as a to-do in my Basecamp. And if I'm going to go ahead and create some sort of, some sort of card, um, uh, a to-do list, and I'm synced with you, you'll also receive that in your Evernote as a note. So it's just pure collaboration. Whatever is happening, we're always in sync as a company, because that's how companies actually grow properly and, and productively. So with that, I'll let Sanad give an awesome demo of exactly how we do that. Okay. Oh, you have two, so I'll just keep this one, maybe? Okay. Okay, so we don't have time here. Let's go. So. So what the Cloud HQ is, is basically we sync and integrate data between different cloud services. And it seems like a, this is a little here. Uh, it's, we didn't set up. We started talking before the setup. But it's OK. Uh, this is the exact example of the simple setup. We basically sync uh, a Google Drive folder called Evernote Sync with, the, with the Evernote. So we will just do the, and create a small note inside my Evernote. Let's call that note test note and write something. Uh, it's not spelled correctly, but I guess that's how you write SDS. OK, we, we sync it Evernote. Now this is uploaded to the Evernote website. And now let's see if it's in a Google Drive. We put it in, if you can see in Google Drive, you have Evernote Sync, Salesforce Sync, all the folders. And let's see, and this is that note, and it should be here in Google Drive. This uh, test note in no time. So the, so the idea of this is now that all your data is synced between cl different cloud services in real time. 
So whatever you have in Evernote, for example, we have this note here. It's in a, your Google, Google Drive like this note. Okay? And for, then you can also sync your Salesforce. So your Salesforce data is inside your Google Drive. So you have your accounts, uh, you have your old data exports are on Google Drive, your, all your documents and files from Salesforce in you know, Google Drive. And additional to that, you can sync between the Dropbox and the Google Drive and all these things. And let's see, because we are doing the demo, let's see if this is uploaded already in the, in a, in a, in a, yeah, unfortunately it seems like we still haven't uploaded this to the, uh, to the Google Drive. But uh, that's the Cloud HQ. It's here. The note is here. There's note. Yeah. yeah. Yay! <laughs> uh, it takes about a uh, 10 to 15 to 20 uh, seconds because it first Evernote needs to be this has to upload to the Evernote server, then from Evernote server through our servers to the Google Drive. So that's just the latency. And right. uh, of course, uh, you can in PDF all the notes. You can decide that the notes are in PDF. That's just Evernote use case, I guess. So um, with, with Google Drive, you know how you have your different files and everything. Does that also work with different services such as Dropbox? Can you, let's say if your company works with just Dropbox only instead of Drive, can it link up with that? Can it link up with both at the same time? How does that work? Correct. You can, for example, you can sync all of these services, Google Drive with the Gmail, Dropbox with the Google Drive, uh, Box with the OneDrive, SharePoint with the, uh, with the Google Drive, things like that. Yes. You on can Salesforce. On Salesforce, yeah. <laughs> so for example, if your company uses Dropbox, you can ensure that all of your employees have their, own, in their Dropbox, have a folder called Evernote Sync folder. So all the Evernote notes will be automatically, uh, automatically uploaded to the Dropbox in real time. Basically, you can use whatever apps you want to use. And whoever you're working with can use whatever apps they want to use. And you can still work on the same project. How, how do you guys differentiate yourselves from a service like Ift? If this and that? Yes. Oh, yeah, we actually synchronize. So basically, which means the updates will be changed, renames of the files will be changed, and we actually can be used for a backup because we will also transfer all the historical data. And also, most important thing is that we tightly integrate the, the services. It is not that you have some kind of wizard and so on. We know how to correctly translate your Salesforce records and CSV and convert them into Google Google Drive or in a base camp. And just to elaborate on that, we're actually the only company who two way syncs, which right. means that for if this and then that, that, it just it pushes data, right? It replicates. Versus Cut HQ, it, it, it doesn't replicate, it syncs. So if you make any changes in if this then that, it doesn't actually reflect yeah. in your in your end product. Think Ours about, does. Yeah. It's collaborative. Please. So I have a question about uh, redundancy. So like, say I'm an organization of like 10 people and everyone uses a different service. Like my, I guess what's gonna happen is that you would, if, unless, if everything is copied on every single service, all the data usage is gonna increase by like 10X or something like that. Can you control the redundancy in your system? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, actually, the, the thing is like this, in companies mainly, people rely on one main service. For example, they use Ignite or Google Drive as their mail storage service. Uh, the other data, which is an Evernote and Dropbox, is just a small fracture of the, the data. In, and what we are saying, and the drop, uh, Google Drive is offering one terabyte per account. So uh, the amount of data is a Dropbox or an Evernote, which needs to be synced to the Google Drive is very, small comparing to how much of the data can be synced. But yes, you can exclude what you want to, not to sync, of course. You can say one. And, and cloud storage is becoming free 
soon enough, that's where the future is going to lie in cloud storage anyways. So if it's a price issue. And you guys are saving be. revision histories across all the platforms also, just in case something gets written over by somebody and you need to get back to fix yes. it? That's an excellent question. Uh, the, the thing that we also have that nobody has is that when we replicate, you can specify uh, that the previous version of the file is put in a special folder called Cloud HQ Archive. So that your actually deleted file, if you use, for example, Cloud Drive and Dropbox, will be actually synced to your desktop. So you have a real backup. This is the kind of uh, sync for purposes of the data redundancy and backup. Hey, congratulations. This is really, um, it's really useful, really brilliant. How are you charging and what's your user acquisition strategy? How we are charging, we basically segmented our users in three segments. The personal plan, that's for personal users. If you want to, I want to sync my Dropbox with Google Drive and things like that. The second is the professional, that's a premium model, where we allow syncing with the one, one Drive uh, Pro, uh, Basecamp, and other. That's the, for solo lawyers and things like that. That pricing is 90.90 a month. And we offer a business plan, which integrates nicely with the Google Apps for Business and Box Enterprise Box Business so that we can uh, integrate with uh, also with the, uh, how they call it, with the single sign-on services. So, and the re regarding acquisition, user acquisition, <laughs> Naomi can say. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we do a lot of partnerships. We're pretty tight with um, all the partners that we're with. Um, we do a lot of uh, organic um, efforts as well. Um, of course, you know, we do AdWords. We're, we're really strong in SEO. Um, and, and so, yeah, we, we try to be as organic as possible. I mean, we clearly do. We also do ads, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. Twitter ads. Hey, Twitter cards, I'm shouting out to you. Um, <laughs> Facebook ads. We're doing a whole bunch of different kinds of things. Um, but, but we're also keeping it as organic as possible. So we actually, um, we actually have our, uh, conversations with as many people as possible who, who are talking about what we specialize in, right? So if somebody is talking about um, losing a file in Dropbox and they're upset or whatever, I'll reach out to them. Um, you know, I've got an API set up, and like anybody, by the way, uh, can set up their APIs for free on Twitter, for example. You, you actually have to talk to your audience, and that's what we do a lot of. That's part of our acquisition. Um, we're also, it's, it's probably important to mention too that um, we're bootstrapped and uh, profitable, which, which means that we're, we're getting paid. Uh, not more than that, but we're getting paid. Um, but we have no outside investment. So, so that's been like a couple of years of hard work, but we are where we are now. And, and so yeah, I'm happy to have any discussions uh, with anybody who has a really good network who could help us grow in the cloud space. And there's a five of us, so we need kind of to eat, all five of us. <laughs> all right, Crowd HQ. A cloud HQ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.